Welcome back to the Gift Beats Vegas podcast. We are ready for the week three NFL Vegas spread picks. And I'll be honest, this is the first week so far where I felt very confident. Like we got a lot of games that are in our favor. We got five money picks this week and I feel good about every single one of them. I don't think that we've seen any line advantages quite like this yet this season. So I'm very happy about that. And I feel vindicated by all of our picks so far. I know the first two weeks have been tough and I, you know, I've been reading the comments and I understand the frustration but I felt like I read the lines very well. I just can't equate for the better team shooting themselves in the foot. I I don't know how you equate for that because nothing in these games has anything to do with the other team being good. Like the Rams against the Falcons, the Rams were winning 28 to three. I feel vindicated with that pick because they let them come back. It had nothing to do with the Falcons being good. It's just like with the Broncos against Houston this past week. Broncos had every opportunity to win that game by double digits. The defense did their job. Houston couldn't score. You would think Russell was in that offensive line, the running back core play action should have worked out pretty well. And it didn't. So talent wise, I feel like we're making the right picks. It just hasn't shaken out that way. And I hope that you guys stayed away from that Colts game as well. I should have done an update for you guys on that. I do apologize. I've been working all week, but once I saw that Michael Pittman was out, along with Shaq Leonard, I really wouldn't have made that a money pick. And the Colts, without Pittman, they that means they have nothing to throw to. And I'll be honest, guys, I don't care what the matchup is the rest of the season. The Colts are a team that I will no longer be putting on the money picks. Kind of view the Colts now as kind of like the Carolina Panthers, a team with some talent but can't be trusted. So, hey, you live, you learn, we move on to week three. We were four and three in the money picks last week, which was an improvement on week one. So I think we're just going to keep getting better. And again, there's a lot of picks this week that I like five money picks for you guys. Let's get to it. We're going to start with our first game Steelers plus three and a half versus the Browns. Got Steelers to cover Browns to win Browns ultimately win because they're a deeper football team. They're better on the O line, better on the D line, deeper secondary, deeper running back core with Hunt and Chubb. Um, So I think at the end of the game, they just make a couple more plays, one or two possession, better game. They get it done. But I think the Steelers are going to cover because they have the weapons to keep this close. And that's one thing that the Browns don't seem to understand. Getting Amari Cooper in the building, that's great. But you need more than just one option, a la the Colts that we just talked about. Offensive driven league. All the rules favor the offense and the receivers, and you don't have enough Somebody's got to talk to some of these owners because they're pretty stupid. The Steelers understand that. They got Deontay Johnson. They got Chase Claypool. They got Pickett. They got Fryer Muth. They got guys to throw the football to. So even though I'm not a big fan of Trubisky, and ultimately that's probably what's going to lose them the game, I think they can keep it within three and a half because scoring-wise they can keep it close. And for those reasons, I'm going to go over 40 and a half. That's low for me in a game like this. I know these teams play each other tough, but – I think there's enough weapons like on both sides cumulatively where it's going to push it over that each team can get to 21 points. Next game, our first money pick. And this line seems too good to be true. Like some of the other ones I'm going to mention guys, I know the bills are on the road in this game, but we got bills minus only four and a half against the dolphins. That should at least be a touchdown, but they want to give it to us with that. I'm going to take it. And I think about Josh Allen, think about him dominating this game, dominating that dolphins defense. I don't see how they don't win at least by a touchdown. And there's really nothing in this game that favors the Dolphins. Certainly, if you look at the receiving group, yeah, I guess they have a little bit of a matchup that can work in their favor with the Bills secondary without Tredavious White. But one thing that the Bills have that the Dolphins really don't have and something the Ravens don't have and that allowed the Dolphins to come back in that game this past Sunday is a pass rush led by Von Miller. Tua is not going to be sitting pretty in that pocket during this game. Not going to happen. The Bills are going to be coming in waves with Miller coming at you, and it's going to be a problem all game for the Dolphins. So you can have great receivers like the Dolphins have, but if you don't have time to throw it to them, it doesn't really matter. And on top of all of that, the coaching for the Bills, I think, is going to be a difference. You have to count Sean McDermott in the top five to top seven head coaches in the NFL. And the Dolphins obviously don't have that. So too much favors the Bills here. We're going to tease it to Bills plus two and a half. Plus we're going to go over 
51 and a half in this game because there is enough weapons on both sides to push that over. And I think the bills are going to put up 30 at least next game, our next money pick. And this is another one that's too good to be true. And again, guys, you want to pounce on these before these get up to seven or more, but this should really be Bengals minus 14 in the spread. And they want to give it to us at only Bengals minus four and a half. The jets have no advantages in this game. The Bengals are better on the D line running back core coaching, wide receiver, O-line, quarterback, secondary. Everything is better for the Bengals. I think they dominate this game from top to bottom. I think this is going to be a statement win by the Bengals. I think they're tired of getting embarrassed. And I think Jamar Chase is going to take this game over. So Bengals win and cover. Tease that to the Bengals plus two and a half. Under 43 because I think they shut down Flacco in that offense. Don't get fooled by the first two weeks, guys. The Jets suck ass. They suck. Don't get fooled. Don't be the one that takes the points because you think Vegas is trying to trick you. They're not trying to trick you. It just takes time for some of these teams to find themselves and get in a group. It's a long off season. It's a boring off season. Practice doesn't even look like real practice anymore. It's kind of just like a walkthrough. So these teams with live game speed, it takes some time to catch up. It's hard to equate for, but as the season goes on, we're going to be right about a lot of these picks. If the Bengals lose to the Jets or allow this to be a close game, then something is wrong, in my opinion. Because you got the Super Bowl runner-ups from last year going against the bottom five team. And if they can't win this very comfortably, then the Bengals need to reconsider everything that they're doing. Next game, next money pick. This one's a little bit closer with the line, but I like it. I like the way the line reads. Because I really think that it should have been the Titans giving points to the Raiders in this game. But the Titans are actually getting a point right now. And I think that's a bit odd. Because, yes, the Raiders have some explosion. They got a good pass rush up front on the D-line. They got better receivers than the Titans do, technically. But the Titans are good at the meat and potatoes. They're better on the O-line. And the trump card in this game for me and why I'm going Titans to win a cover and make it a money pick is the linebacking core for this team. I think that this Titans front seven is going to be able to control this. The Raiders have one of the worst offensive lines in the league, and we saw that against the Arizona Cardinals. That's why the Cardinals were able to come back. Kyler Murray, yes, absolutely, he had a lot to do with it, and the big defensive play at the end had a lot to do with it. But the Raiders couldn't grind clock out. They couldn't run the football. Derek Carr wasn't consistently protected because they have one of the worst O lines in the league. That's a big problem. The Titans, well, they may not be a Super Bowl team this year, and they have lost some pieces this offseason. They're still a formidable team that understands that you have to win in the trenches. The Raiders still don't understand that. They think they can get by without doing that. Well, guess what? It's going to be a difference in this game. Titans win this game in a physical game, grind it out, score more points. We're going to tease that to the Titans plus eight, and I'm going to go over 46 because I trust the Titans to get some play action going, get it to Burks and Woods down the field, and take advantage of that Raiders secondary. And then the Raiders are going to score some points too because they got Devontae Adams. They got Waller at tight end. They, they have some weapons. But what's going to lose this game for the Raiders is their offensive line. Next game, we got the Saints minus three versus the Panthers. I got the Saints to win, Panthers to cover. Um, like I said earlier in this podcast, stay away from Panthers games because you don't know what the hell you're getting. I mean, honestly, the Panthers got a lot of good talent, but they're poorly coached and they don't show up on Sunday. Why? I don't know. Maybe they still have to build chemistry, but it's something that I'm not real willing to roll with anymore, just like I'm not willing to roll with the Colts anymore because they simply cannot be trusted. So ultimately, the Saints get the W because they have a better secondary, they have a better offensive line, and they're deeper at receiver. So they're going to make more plays in those areas. The Panthers, the only thing that really favors them is the D-line. I think that there is going to be some pressure on Winston in this game a little bit. The defense for the Panthers steps up a little bit in areas, um, especially with Kamara, what's going on with him, his injury. I think that's a big blow for the Saints, something to watch, uh, because without Kamara, they really don't have a run game at all. And it's just Jameis Winston going out there, dropping back and throwing it, and the whole world knows it. So I think that favors the Panthers in this game. Um, but again, this is one I would stay away from. It's just a, a game where it's hard to equate for what's going to happen. 
I think you guys kind of get that vibe from it too. Uh, and I'm going to go over 41 simply because I respect some of the weapons like the Panthers got McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, the Saints, even without Kamara, they got Michael Thomas and Landry that can go out there and make plays. So enough weapons to push that over a low 41, but not really liking the way the spread is out with that one. Next game, we got Ravens minus three versus the Patriots. I got the Ravens to win, Patriots to cover. Ravens end up winning because there are some positions that they're better at, like the secondary. They got a better linebacking core. The D-line's a little bit deeper. And ultimately, Lamar. In a game like this where the Patriots don't really have a great pass rush, I like Judon. You know, he's decent. But I don't think the Patriots really have anybody that can fully contain Lamar for a full four quarters. So I think they make enough plays. Lamar's with his feet, with his arm. He'll make enough plays to get the W. But the Patriots cover because they got better coaching. Not a big John Harbaugh fan. And his exploitations and the problems with him through the years I've seen, he does struggle against other head coaches. And when the going gets tough, he doesn't make adjustments. Kind of like how they lost against the Dolphins. Not that the Dolphins coaching staff is that good, but he never made any adjustments in that game. So that's a big problem. And I think also the receivers for the Patriots, that's going to help them out in this game. Devontae Parker, I think we'll finally see him get involved. Bourne, Myers, they got some good weapons, good tight end group with the Patriots too. With the Ravens, it's kind of straightforward. Uh, Their offensive line isn't that dominant. And I mean, when you look at their receivers, I mean, what? Bateman's hurt and how uh, Mark Andrews is the only one that they really can rely on. It's not enough. The Like I said, these teams don't understand. It's an offensive-driven league, and you just completely neglect the receiver position. Literally, the GM and the front office, all of them said for the Ravens that we're not concerned about receiver this offseason. Well, how could you not be when all the rules favor receiver? So Mac Jones, I think he's going to have protection because I'm, I don't fear the Ravens' pass rush, and he's going to make enough plays to cover this. But at the end, I think Lamar makes enough – plays in the fourth quarter to push it to them getting the W in a close game. And I'm going to go over 43 and a half because again, I expect Lamar to play good and the Patriots got enough weapons to put up some points. And when Matt Jones has protection and he gets comfortable, he's a very accurate quarterback. Next game. This was a borderline money pick, but I can't make it a money pick because there's injuries to the lions offensive line. Otherwise I would have, but That's a big problem because the Vikings got Zadarius Smith and Daniil Hunter. And if Frank Ragnow and Jonah Jackson are banged up or they're going to be out again, then Jared Goff, who is a statue, is going to have some issues. But to me, seven and a half, even with those injuries, is too much to give the Lions because their offense is actually legit this season. Williams and Swift at running back have been playing really good football. Amon Ross St. Brown, who was, I remember the Lions stole him in the draft a year ago. And uh, we're starting to see some of the fruits of their draft picks pay off. This Lions offense is no joke. They're pretty good. I don't think the Lions are one of the worst teams in the league anymore. So I really thought this should have been Vikings only minus two and a half. And it's, they're giving the Lions seven and a half points. Now, ultimately, I think the Vikings are going to win the game because they're just simply a better football team from top to bottom. You know, they can run the football. They can go toe-to-toe with this Lions offense scoring-wise. But the Vikings have a better defense. They got a better linebacking core, and they got a better secondary. So I think that's what's going to win the game for the Vikings. But the Lions are going to keep it close because of their offense. They got enough weapons to go toe-to-toe with Thielen and Jefferson. So also because of that, I'm going to go over 51 and a half. Yeah, it's a little bit of a high point spread, but... With all the weapons on both sides, I think that's pretty good. That's one that I'm going to recommend. And again, guys, um, the over-unders that I really like this week, I'll type out down in the info section. So if you want to make bets with that, you can as well. Moving on now, we got the Eagles minus four versus the Commanders. I got the Eagles to win, Commanders to cover. I think the defensive line for Washington is going to be able to stop the run. And I think they're going to be able to contain Hurts, which is going to go a long way for the cover. But ultimately, you look at the Eagles' offensive weapons, man. Devonta Smith, A.J. Brown. I just think they make enough plays to get them the W towards the end of this game. 
And I think at times, too, I think the defense for the Eagles is going to step up a little bit because Carson Wentz just simply isn't a good quarterback, guys. He's not good. Their offensive line isn't very good either. So there's some things about Washington and, you know, there's some why I never really want to make them a money pick, why I don't ever really want to roll with them. I would suggest staying away from all Washington games. That's my opinion, my expert opinion on that. Uh, but in this particular game, again, they cover – uh, because of their defense, they're able to get that. And I'm going to go over 50, high point spread, but I could see the commander scoring like 23 or 24 points, and then the Eagles going out there and scoring 28 along those lines. It's going to be close to this the spread line, division game, tough fought. So that's my reasoning behind that. But honestly, you know, this is a game where I think anything can happen. I think you guys know that too. Uh, really neither team can really be trusted at this point. I mean, the Eagles, they're supposedly getting better, and I get that, but I'm just not at that point yet. I don't know if I trust Jalen Hurts that much. I don't know if I trust this Eagles defense, particularly the defensive line that's old and aging. There's just things about the Eagles that I can't fully get behind, even the offensive line. Like, that was supposed to be a strong suit for them this year, and it's all right, but it's not as dominant as people thought it would be. Next game. This is going to be an interesting one. We'll see if the Colts finally get their shit together, but it's a game I'll be staying away from. Any Colts game, just stay away from it like you would a girl with herpes. That's how I look at the Colts right now. So we got Chiefs minus six and a half against the Colts. That's just a little bit too much in the spread for me. If this was Chiefs minus four and a half, I would have pounced all over this. But it's a full touchdown. The Colts do have a good offensive line. They can run the football. They can regulate some things. Pittman probably will be back in this one. And the Colts defense isn't too bad either. I mean, it's not great, but they do have a decent secondary. They do have some physical players in the front seven. And the Chiefs, while they got a lot of weapons, we have to look at that there really is no dominant number one for the Chiefs. And I think in a game like this, if the Colts are running the football effectively, they get play action for Matt Ryan, it could keep this game close. Because the Chiefs in the secondary and their linebacking core, I don't really fear that. So if Matt Ryan's got time in the pocket with play action, he can go toe-to-toe with this team and keep it close. And I'm also going to go under 49 and a half because I don't expect a lot of explosion on either side. Next game, we got Texans plus three versus the Bears. I got the Bears to win and cover in this game. We're talking about two of the worst teams in football here. So... That's definitely something to look at. But the Bears are better at the running back core. They're better on the D-line, better in the linebacking core, and better in the secondary. The only matchup where the Texans are favored here is they have a better offensive line than the Bears, which will help a little bit throughout the game. And I just got to make sure that I got the over-under for this one looked up here for you guys. Texans versus. Just want to make sure that we got this right. Um, uh, but again, this is actually one of the few games this season where we're going to see the Bears favored, and it's not going to happen too often. So the over-under point total is 38 for this game, and I'm actually going to go under with that because there really isn't a lot of weapons on either side to throw to. So I would be surprised. And we've seen both of these defenses play somewhat decent at times so far this season. So even though it's a low point spread, I do like the under. All right, we're going to move on now to the Jaguars, plus seven versus the Chargers. Here's our next money pick, guys. Chargers win and cover, tease the Chargers to a pick. And we're going to go under 48 because I think the Chargers defense absolutely dominates the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence is a bitch in the pocket, and you're going to have Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa coming at him. Good luck, Lawrence. Good luck, because you're going to be backpedaling and scared out of your mind all game. I don't fear the Jaguars in any way. I would say the only thing they have that's a little bit better than the Chargers is their offensive line is a little bit deeper, but the Chargers coaching-wise, better. Quarterback, better, obviously. Wide receiver, deeper, even if Keenan Allen doesn't play. Better linebacking core and a better secondary. Chargers are, are going to dominate this game. I really feel good about that. Don't be fooled. 
the Jaguars beating the Colts isn't because the Jaguars are technically better than the Colts. It's because the Colts don't know how to move the football on offense with no weapons. The Jaguars haven't done anything that surprised me this season. So this should really be Chargers minus eight and a half or nine, and they want to give it to us at only a touchdown. I think this is going to be a two or three score victory by the Chargers easily. Next game, our final money pick. Rams minus four and a half versus the Cardinals. I got the Rams to win and cover. I know Kyler Murray can pull some magic. I get that. We saw it happen against the Raiders this past week, and I made that a money pick for Arizona to cover against them. But this is a different animal. The Rams are one of the better teams in the National Football League. And how do you win games? You win in the trenches, ultimately, because you can get by with a lesser quarterback sometimes, or you know maybe your defense isn't as good as you would like it to be. But if your quarterback has protection and you're getting to the other team's quarterback, it makes a big difference. And unfortunately for the Cardinals, they have a bottom three or bottom five, however you want to list it, offensive line and defensive line. This should really be Rams minus nine or 10, and they want to give it to us at Rams only minus four and a half. This is another one that I would pounce on soon if I were you guys, but nobody's going to be able to stop Aaron Donald, let alone Leonard Floyd coming off the edge. And Ernest Jones, those guys are going to be able to contain Kyler Murray. And then the Cardinals really have nobody to throw to. So, okay, Ramsey will go against A.J. Green or however they want to put it. Put Troy Hill on A.J. Green. And that's it. You can have a safety watch Zach Ertz. And uh, that's it. You figured out the Arizona Cardinals. So I feel very confident about that. On top of it all, Sean McVay. I think he outcoaches uh, the Cardinals here in this game. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury, I don't think that he's anywhere near on the level that McVay is. So that's a big difference, too. When you when you have a coaching advantage, it makes a huge difference. Not every game that's a factor, but in this one it is. And I'm going to go over 51 and a half because both offenses can be electric. And I'm going to tease the Rams to plus two and a half. Next game, we got the Packers plus three versus the Buccaneers. I got Packers to cover, Buccaneers to win. I think because the Buccaneers have more weapons, even though Godwin is out right now, we definitely got to pay attention to the situation with Mike Evans possibly getting suspended because if Mike Evans does get suspended, then I think we're going to have to go Packers to win and cover. But as it stands right now, as long as everything stays the same, I think the Bucs are going to be able to make enough plays offensively. And I think how good their defense has played is going to be a big factor because we've seen issues with the Packers offensive line. The Packers don't have a lot to throw to and the Bucs, their defense from top to bottom has been playing really good football. So I don't think that's going to change much. I think they're going to be able to get pressure on Rodgers, who hasn't really been that mobile as of late. So that ultimately is what's going to end up losing it for the Packers. But I think the Packers can keep it close because they can grind clock. They do have a secondary that can at least slow down the Buccaneers a little bit and keep it within three. And it comes down to a fourth quarter finish. And it's really going to be like a one or two possession difference of a game. You got two decent teams here playing each other. This is definitely one that I'm looking forward to in week three to watch. Um, and I'm going to go under 45 in this game because I do respect each of the defenses here. Um, I think both teams are going to be efficient, make plays, but I don't think we're going to see a high-scoring game here. Both defenses have shown that they have a lot to offer. Next game, we got the Falcons plus two against the Seahawks. I got Falcons to cover, Seahawks to win. Uh, I'm also going to go over 42 and a half. I think the main reason for that is because both of these defenses are pretty flimsy. So I do think that even though these offenses aren't overly respectable, when – you know, if you play against a bad defense, it doesn't really matter. Like, even the Falcons were able to put up some points on the Rams this past week. So, they can do that against the Rams. I think they can put up a few points against the Seahawks, keep this close. Um, at the end of the day, this is going to be a close game, I believe. You got the secondary that favors the Falcons, the deep, the uh, offensive line definitely better than the Seahawks. But then there's some things that favors the Seahawks as well. Coaching, I think Pete Carroll is better than Arthur Smith, so that's going to go a long way here. Wide receiver, Seahawks are obviously better. And the Seahawks got a little bit better of a linebacking for it. So not a big difference in the matchup there when you're talking about talent and positions. Close game comes down to the fourth quarter. And the Falcons just cover in a close game with that too. 
Next game, we got 49ers plus two versus the Broncos. 49ers cover, Broncos win. Right now, I know Jimmy G is back. I know coaching is going to factor into this. And the 49ers, they, you know what? They could end up winning the game. I would not be surprised if that happens now that Jimmy G is back in the building. Uh, but the Broncos got things that favor them in this game as well, guys. Offensive line, I think they're better than the 49ers right now. They got a deeper running back core, better linebacking core, and a better secondary. The things that favor the 49ers, I mentioned coaching and uh, defensive line. I think the 49ers are a little bit better. So it's not like a huge, huge margin of separation there. But I just look at the Broncos with a few more advantages, like I mentioned. And that's what's going to get them the W in a close fought game. I would be surprised if this was a 49ers blowout. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and the Broncos, they certainly haven't been blowing anybody out recently in the first two weeks, even though they should have. So going against a formidable 49ers team, I think it's going to be a dogfight and a very close game. We could be talking about a one-point finish here. And I'm going to go over 43 because I do respect both of the offenses. Eventually, the Broncos got to start to click. And then the 49ers with Jimmy G. Kittle should be back next week probably. Um, Ayuk and Debo Samuel. And with uh, obviously with the expert play calling there, I think it's going to go a long way for the 49ers in this one to keep it close and cover. And we're going to cap it off with the Cowboys plus three versus the Giants. I got the Cowboys to cover, Giants to win. This is one of those games, too, guys, where it's like it's hard to tell you like what's exactly going to happen because both of these teams got issues. I mean, Cooper Rush at quarterback, who the hell knows what he's going to do? Um, the Giants, you know, they've been they've had so many injury issues and, and problems with their defense and things like that. It's really hard to equate for. So ultimately, the Cowboys defense, that's what I think is going to keep this within three. But the Giants make a few more plays because Daniel Jones is better than Cooper Rush. So anytime you've got a quarterback advantage, that's huge. Uh, I think the Giants are better at the coaching staff. Uh, and I think they're deeper at wide receiver right now than the Cowboys. So that gives them the W. They're going to make a few more plays on offense. But the Cowboys defense keeps that one close. So with that, guys, that's our week three Vegas spread picks. And this week, I mean, we got everything up. So... I think later in the week, I'll probably come back on. And if there's any updates that needs to be done, or I might talk about a couple individual games if something stands out. But I feel really good about these picks. So if you guys, this is time to pounce on some of these spreads early. I think it would be wise. So again, guys, thank you for listening. Make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.